Hi, my name is John Wilson, otherwise known as Crazy But Able, and for my entry into the 555 contest, I'm going to see if I can turn a 555 into a voltage follower. I know what you're thinking. That's ridiculous. And it is ridiculous, but uh, I'm not really enough of an electronics engineer because I'm not really an engineer uh, to know or to think of anything really cool and clever. And I figure all you clever, cool kids out there, you guys are doing those circuits that really use the 555 in the manner in which it was designed. But my first thought was, can I get this to output at a voltage that's not zero or five volts? This thing's really good at making square waves, right? Can I make it output like half the supply voltage or a third or a fourth or, you know, can I just get it to output something that isn't a square wave? Hmm. So here's the basic idea. I'm gonna take a really slow 555 chip, okay? Something that, uh, like one of the original ones that um, is only limited to like 100 kilohertz or something like that. And then I'm going to put in front of it, driving it, a really fast comparator, okay? So the comparator is gonna be comparing the input signal with the output from the 555 and you know if it if it if it, if the output is too high from the 555 the comparator is going to slam down if it's too low the comparator is going to slam up and the idea is to make that 555 stay at a stable voltage right who knows if it's going to work but it sounds like it might be plausible right here's my experimental setup i have this arduino that's going into this light i'm only using the arduino for the analog out signal which is actually a 490 hertz uh, pwm square wave I then filter that signal so that I get a constant analog voltage. After going through the filter, the signal goes over to the comparator. Now, an actual comparator is going to have a little bit of hysteresis, uh, and I didn't want that for this circuit, so I'm using uh, a TLV2772, a fairly fast op amp. The bandwidth is 5.1 megahertz, and the slew rate is around 10.5 uh, volts per microsecond. After that, the signal goes to the 555, to the reset pin, and when the threshold and the trigger are both tied to ground, whatever signal comes in on the reset line is going to be the signal on the output. So imagine you have two and a half volts coming into the comparator, and for the sake of the argument, the 555 is at zero volts. The voltage will be more positive on the positive input of the comparator, and so the comparator will swing high, and that'll make the output of the 555 swing high. Now the idea is that hopefully the 555 is going to have a slower rise time than uh, the TLV2772. And so then as it's rising and going past 2.5 volts, the comparator is going to figure this out and slam back down to 0 volts. That will send the 555 back to 0 volts again. And so the idea is we can, keep the, we can keep that output at a constant voltage. So let's fire this up and see what we get. And as you can see, it's working. Mostly working. Um, it's not exactly tracking it. Now the blue line is the input voltage and the red line is the output voltage of the 555. So that blue line is what I'm feeding into uh, the comparator and the red line is what I'm getting out of the 555. And as you can see, as I go all the way up the, the, the range, um, you know, the, the 555 never quite wants to go all the way up and it never quite wants to go all the way down. And, it was only sort of tracking it and then you know if I when I get over into this range right here this gets really interesting now here no doubt I'm I'm doubtless seeing some aliasing uh, with what's really going on there but let's see what happens if I give it a waveform to follow and not just a voltage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off some of the uh, capacitance some of the filter capacitance on the um, on the square wave to get a triangle wave and uh, we'll see how well it tracks the triangle wave. Now, right now it's uh, right now the the duty cycle of the of the square wave coming into the input filter is zero, so I'm not going to have to go fight. Change this and uh, zoom out a little bit. It's uh, I wouldn't want to say that it's linear. Um, you know, let me change the trigger to trigger on the input voltage instead of the output voltage. As you can see, as I change the input triangle wave, you can see the 555 trying to keep up with it. Cool. 
Now let's see what happens if we take out all the filtering and we just feed it a square wave. I've actually never done this, so uh, this should be interesting. As you could probably guess, the uh, 555 is a pretty amazing uh, square wave voltage follower. <laughs> it works amazingly well at that. We give back the triangle wave. Um, it's not quite as happy. Fortunately, there's one area of electronics where you can kind of get away with a little bit of distortion. Now, I haven't actually tested this. I just hooked it up. Okay, in fact, here, let me show you. The Arduino is now only supplying power. The uh, uh, signal is coming in to this little amplifier here. That This is a guitar amplifier that I'm in the middle of prototyping. And the way I currently have it is I have a, a, an op amp real op amp, um, just a voltage follower stage, and the voltage follower stage is going to, you know, get everything up to the nice signal between 0 and 5 volts that we want for the next part of the, the stage, and then I have these two switches over here, uh, I got to flip both at the same time because they're just single pole switches. Um, so they're going to switch between just feeding the signal directly into the amplifier, or feeding it over to the uh, 555 comparator uh, thing okay I'm kind of operating at the limits probably of what you should be delivering power to an Arduino you know a guitar amplifier uh, it's a little chip amp though I think I'm okay here we go this is just the clean signal and now this is what it's gonna look like with flipped on. Now the red is going to be the 555 and the blue is going to be the original. So that's it. Wait, what? You're right. In fact, that's a very good question. I had that same question myself. So I borrowed a real scope from my friend Steve. It's a Hitachi oscilloscope. It's a 40 megahertz scope. It's an old analog scope, but it should have the resolution to show us what's really going on. Uh, as you can see, I have this set to uh, uh, 0.1 volts per division on the vertical side, and uh, for the time, that's uh, 0.5 microseconds per division horizontally. And for this test, I've gone back to uh, getting the signal from the Arduino, and I have it fully filtered, so this is a uh, quote-unquote analog voltage. And uh, if I take a look here at um, what's coming out of the 555, uh, let's see, at uh, 0.1 volts per division, that's about uh, 200 millivolts there, and uh, at about 0.5 microseconds per division, that's about uh, 1 megahertz. So those are the limitations on our voltage follower setup. So if I turn off the lights and turn down the intensity, and uh, if I zoom in, I can get a better look at the peaks there. I'm not really sure what this says about the 555, but I'm pretty impressed with the scope. For this test, I'm going to sweep the input voltage from 5 volts to 0 volts and back to 5 volts again. And I'm going to record both of the oscilloscopes so you can see what's going on. One thing I think is pretty interesting is I'm not seeing the same squirreliness in the output of the 555 when the input voltage is in this range. One of the reasons why this might be the case is that I'm still powering the guitar amplifier from the same supply, so there may be some additional capacitance uh, across the supply rails.
Thank you.